How's it going everyone? This is Travis from Law Revere Photo and today we're going to be talking about a very important aspect when it comes to both digital and film photography and that is ISO or film speed. ISO is one of the three most important factors when it comes to determining proper exposure for your photograph. There's ISO, shutter setting, and aperture. Those two will cover in future episodes. So to start, let's talk about film speed first. Normally when you buy film, you're going to buy film that has a certain number on it. 50, 100, 160, 400, 800, 1600, and 3200. Those numbers, they do actually mean something. What that represents is the sensitivity of light to the grain that's on the film. If you have a lower end number, you're going to get less sensitivity to light, but also less visible grain. But if you go to 3200, you're going to have very visible grain, but that grain is also extremely sensitive to light. There are different situations for which you use those different film speeds. If you're shooting 50, you're normally out in a sunny day doing a landscape, such as Fuji Velvia 50, which is a very bright, saturated film. Color slide so you can see it as you're done. But if you go to ISO 3200, such as, let's say, Delta 3200 from Ilford, that's a very sensitive film that can be used at nighttime. But with that type of effect and that sensitive of film grain, you get really grainy looking shots. And it gives a little bit more of a grunge kind of look. If that's the look that you like to go for, that's cool. I'm okay with it. I haven't done anything 3200 just yet. But my standard film, as you guys know, is Kodak Tri-X. Tri-X is normally rated at speed 400. 400 is a pretty basic speed that a lot of people use for most, sometimes nighttime, but mostly daytime. And you can use it in the shade, bright sunlight, sunny 16 roll, as we'll come to also talk about in a later episode. ISO is another name for film speed, but we just refer to ISO more in today's world with digital cameras. For example, today I'm recording this video on a Canon 60D but the ISO setting right now is at 800. Why? Because it might look pretty bright in this room, but it's not that bright as we would think. There's actually one single track light up on the ceiling that's lighting me pretty, pretty good right now. But what's nice about ISO 800 is that it's still bright enough that you don't get a whole lot of digital noise. Digital noise differs from film grain because digital noise, you get all of the different colors and it kind of looks bad. It starts to muddy up all of your dark parts of your image. Typically, if you're trying to shoot a really high ISO in a dark scene, you're gonna see a lot of different little speckles. And I don't know, sometimes for me, it gets a little bit distracting. Grain, on the other hand, for something like film, I don't mind, I think it looks cool. Now, some of the advantages of today's ISO capabilities as opposed to yesterday's film speed capabilities is that normally with film, especially in a camera, just a standard 35 millimeter film camera, you have to pick one film speed and use that for the entire roll. So Tri-X 400, I have to use 400 ISO for all 36 exposures. Now some cameras, you're actually able to purchase different film backs, like one of my medium format cameras that I have that we'll talk about, that you can use different films. So if I wanted to shoot a high ISO black and white for one shot, I could switch it and put it on my camera. But if I wanted to do a low ISO 50, for example, I could switch out that and put that on the camera. So that's pretty cool. But with today's digital cameras, you can change your ISO on the fly depending on the type of situation that you're in. If you're out on a sunny day, don't use anything higher than 200, maybe 400. That's almost pushing it. You don't, it's not needed. But the thing about 100 speed for ISO is that it's perfectly sharp. You don't ever have to worry about anything being uh, noise, noisy, I guess. But if you're in a dark situation like we are now, I could crank the ISO and accommodate the fact that I can be lit and the whole room around here can be lit as well. But if we go up any higher, it's going to look really, it's going to look really bad. It's not going to look so good. As a demonstration of how digital noise affects your pictures with different ISO settings, I took a couple of photos of the Canon AE-1 from the Canon 60D, just so you could see. So I took a couple of photos with my Canon 60D of my film camera to show you guys what the effects are 
of digital noise on your photographs. So if we start off here with this first image, we have very low noise, very clean image, there's no visible grain whatsoever. And as we go up from 100 to 200, you can see that the grain starts to appear a little bit more. I have to adjust the exposure to make sure that we even everything out because if I kept the shutter speed and the aperture the same and I raised the ISO level, the picture would get brighter. So I have to adjust that naturally. And then from 200, we go another stop up to ISO 400 where you get much more grain. And as we jump here into ISO 1600, you can see in the dark shadows especially that there is a lot of digital noise and that doesn't really look good for the picture overall. If you prefer to do it that way, especially in a dark setting, that's fine. But just as a just as an example, uh, this is normally what a high ISO photograph would look like in a digital setting. If you're shooting film, always be sure of whatever situation you're going into when you're picking your film speed. If you're not sure where you're going into, just pick up a 400. 400 is great. It gives just enough grain that it allows for that sensitivity of light if you're in a dark situation, but not too much grain that it gets distracting. All in all, if you understand the proper principles of film speed and ISO, you can make some really cool pictures and give them a really cool feel depending on what look you're going for. So I wanted to thank you guys for coming to this episode and coming and visiting my channel. I'd like for you to subscribe down at the bottom. If you guys have any questions, be sure to leave a comment below. Find me on Instagram at instagram.com slash T Photo. You can find me online on my new website at lawreverephoto.com. You can find me on Facebook and obviously now here on YouTube. Please spread the word around. I really appreciate it. I appreciate all the feedback and you guys coming here and learning. I like being able to share my knowledge with you and hopefully you guys can make some really cool photos with any of the knowledge that I've been sharing with you today. So I will catch you guys on a future episode. I'll see you guys later.